What's the word? Hi, I'm Elliot Margulies from the Mid Peninsula Media Center, and I'm with six people, six Palo Altans, who all had a conversation with the President and the First Lady one week ago today. One of these people is a former mayor of Palo Alto. So let's hear their whole story over the next half hour. Join us as we find out some amazing details of how that Palo Alto to President connection was made. So I'm going to start the story. You're going to be our storytellers. And I want to start from the beginning that I'm picking, which is the moment you found out you were invited to go to the inauguration. What, how did you find out? And uh, uh, we'll start with Alec over there. How did you find out? And what, what was your initial impression of what you were going to be doing? <clears throat> OK, so I first found out from a, a Facebook post. Uh, Becky over here posted on the Facebook page and said, Hey guys, we're going to the inauguration. At first, I was like, kind of like, wait, is that even possible? Like, and at first, I was like, oh, we're gonna have to pay for you know airfare, like housing. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, it's worth it. Well, I'll pay for it. And then I, we find out actually that everything's free, and that's when I actually started getting really excited for it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Caroline, do you remember when you found out? I do. I was at um, kind of a. a closing meeting for the two videos the YBC made over the summer um, at Palo Alto City Hall and I was here with uh, Dakota and Nitya and uh, it was just kind of announced and I was I was completely in awe it was out of the blue and we had never heard anything about this and it was like absolutely incredible we were so excited Dakota and I Dakota, do you remember like when you first knew you were going to go to see the inauguration, what, what image did you have of it compared to what it turned out to be? Was it totally different? Um, well, it was a really complicated feeling. Like when I knew I was actually going was a different moment from when I heard I was going because like um, Yahweh was just the former mayor <laughs> was reading from um, this certificate that the um, city council was awarding us for the work we'd done this summer, and he was just reading all these different pr provisions down the line, and just one of the last ones out of the blue, oh yeah, and uh, we want you to come to the inauguration and film perspectives for um, the Democratic municipal officers, and I wasn't really sure if that was real or not. It was. <laughs> It was one of those like movie moments where you're like, oh, what? <laughs> you know? um, but um, how if it turned out differently from what I imagined? Well, we'll find out more yeah. about how it turned out. But I'm wondering when you heard the word <laughs> inauguration, what did you think it was going to look like? Yeah. Well, I really wasn't thinking the president's inauguration. I was thinking more of something local, even though that might not even exist. But. <laughs> Just, it wasn't really realistic for us to go to the inauguration. It's a lot of people, too. And then eventually, as we found out about how we were going, it became more real. So. Okay, so you're, you were all part of a video core. We're going to find out more about how your work ended up uh, reaching to Yahweh, our former mayor, and how that ended up you and all in D.C. But... I'm going to cut to your first couple of days in Washington, D.C. You're all, you don't know each other that well, or maybe two of you do. Um, you go out there and you're interviewing um, mayors and stuff, right? Can, can anybody fill me in a little more detail about who were you interviewing and what were these interviews about? Who wants to start? Um, okay, okay, I'll go. Uh, so we were interviewing. Um, local government officials, municipal officials from um, various municipalities or towns from around the country. Um, actually, a pretty high concentration of them were from Tennessee because we had one particular uh, guest that was uh, really active in getting his friends to come interview with us also. So, uh, but a relatively widespread uh, sample and we just um, were asking them questions about their involvement with the Democratic Municipal Officials Organization and um, you know, with the goal of making two videos for them. 
Were any of the um, interviews memorable to you and what they said to you? Any of the messages that you heard from them? Do you remember anything in particular, Nietzsche? Um, actually, yes. I The first guy I interviewed, his name is Myron Lowry, and he actually had an interesting story about how he fist bumped the Dalai Lama. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him about that, and he went on saying that actually it was the Dalai Lama that fist bumped him. <laughs> <laughs> I would remember that. Anything, any, were there like any common messages that they were all seeming to, to give you? What was it, Caroline? Um, there was kind of a theme throughout all of the people we interviewed about um, the how um, like the first time they ran for uh, for being an elected official, they didn't win. And um, I think with almost everyone we interviewed, they said uh, it wasn't even their first, sometimes their second or third time that they won. But like, if you if you power through and, and persevere, that you can get where you want. And that was a really interesting reoccurring concept. <laughs> Can we hear from Yahweh, can we hear what this connection was to the Democratic Municipal Officers? Sure, it's uh, a national organization, DMO, it really is the uh, gathering place for all the municipal level elected officials that identify as being Democrats. So it's uh, kind of a, a clearinghouse for ideas where elected officials can say this is what we're trying to do, you know, to bring to, val to, to, bring to life a lot of the Democratic values within our city. And uh, actually, before the election, um, I had shared, as a uh, board member for the DMO, I had shared with them a lot of the great work of the Youth Video Corps and the partnership with the Media Center. And that this was just a great way to highlight infrastructure within you know, cities, municipalities, uh, an issue that all cities really do struggle with. And the cool thing was uh, you know, that, that the YVC put all of this to rock music. <laughs> they made it so it was accessible. And it was something that, that really uh, you know, made it so it was uh, relevant and hip. And infrastructure is inherently not hip. Mm -hmm. So to have seen that and to be able to share that story with the DMO, then the board really expressed an interest to say, how do we actually get uh, an introduction to this and see what we can do to share this model with other cities? And they wanted to invite the YVC to the inauguration as a result. So the invitation came from the Democratic Municipal Officers um, through you. That's right. And we tagged him with Becky. Wow. OK, so and we also have a, another person <laughs> joining us uh, who was part of the trip. And he's already back at college in uh, Southern California at Chapman. And that's Wes Rappaport. And Wes, how did you get pulled into this trip? We're just in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, well, um, I think it initially sort of, my involvement initially sort of started with Sid Espinoza when he was the mayor. Uh, and he and I sort of formed a partnership through uh, Becky and through the Media Center uh, to produce videos for the community. Uh, and we sort of continued that on until I graduated and he moved on from being the mayor. And I think uh, I'm really glad to see the program develop into a larger group of students and, and a group of people that are really committed to producing some great quality content for the city. So actually the team, this year's team, was working with Mayor Ye and the, you were on the first team which worked with Mayor Espinosa. That's correct. Okay, so, and then we keep hearing Becky's name, so I'm going to get over to her in a moment because I want to switch the scene to your lodgings. You all end up staying uh, in a house of Yahweh's friends. Is that how it worked out? So um, let's first talk about the women's accommodations. Well, Becky, what was, <laughs> what were, where were the women staying? Uh, well, we uh, stayed upstairs, uh, and uh, I had my own room, and the uh, ladies were all bunked in in the uh, guest room. And so that was really lovely to have my own space, and I'm very grateful to Yahweh and his insane friends for putting up with us. Uh, they were really wonderful people and um, extremely welcoming and also very well informed about Washington and politics themselves, which I think is why they were really happy to host us. And we, I think we learned a lot from our hosts, which was great. So uh, you guys shared a room. Huh? <laughs> uh, how much sleeping 
was done in those few nights. Not very much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually more of a reflection of our, our schedule because we were just so, there, like there was something going on all the time. We slept, there wasn't much, you know, late night talking actually. <laughs> so basically by the time you got back home and ate, you were bushed. You just fell, we in, were all fell really asleep. Tired. Um, what about uh, food? Where was the food coming from? <laughs> well, actually, Yahweh came to D.C. a day before, and he actually pretty much raided Costco. <laughs> <laughs> he got these cheese puff balls, um, <laughs> salt sandwiches, lots of water, very good. <laughs> and I pretty much munched on all those croissant sandwiches. They were really good. <laughs> uh, well, Alec was telling me about a different... Um, piece of the uh, menu that he was really into. What was it? Uh, that's true. Actually, the Welch's um, <laughs> you know, fruit snacks. You know, there were 80 packs of them, and so we went through all of them. <laughs> and you had the, the gummy bears, right? I snagged yeah. two before you finished it. Ah, OK. Yahweh, I'm afraid. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty yeah. much me and Yahweh you know, manhandled those. Uh, <laughs> we did our duty. We did our duty. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's important. Yeah. Uh, what was the men's quarters like? Well, actually, we slept like basically in the downstairs living room kitchen area. We actually, uh, my mom actually sent out some uh, air mattresses and bedding, and we just blew up three air mattresses and, and used the couch and just literally took up all the space on the floor, and just we just slept there. I wonder if this is a preview of your lives after college, <laughs> you know, before, when you get into startups uh. and and nonprofit work. You know, <laughs> you, you kind of get used to floors, I guess, or or maybe in the Peace Corps. You, you had true. your yeah. share of floors. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good production, actually, every night. I mean, I think because there were air mattresses everywhere in the house, then everyone just pitched in, and we basically just converted it. So Jama and Brian are the names of their friends that were um, in D.C., and they just kept saying, we have to take a picture. Like, this is incredible that they've converted the house to look like this. <laughs> but it was... It, it, How did you rope them in to, uh, to hosting everyone? Well, like Becky said, they're awesome people. Um, they just they love public service. They when they heard that it was going to be the youth video core, they just said we're happy to host. Um, I think that for from a selfish perspective, it actually let us really spend a lot of quality time together. You know, we there was a lot of production. I'm looking at Wes now, and you know, I know that there was so much production that he carried throughout the trip. But all of us being together at night, it let it let us order pizza. You know, let us just hang out. We play video games together. <laughs> Mario was it? Uh, yeah. Did you imagine traveling with a mayor and living with a mayor for five days was going to be a little different than it turned out to be? Where, yes. Where did yes. you imagine? <laughs> he has a goofy side. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good. It's a good goofy side. I think we all we all learned a lot about each other. Just having to like, not just having to live with each other, but being around each other all the time um, for for like five or six days. It was, um, you know, like I learned that. The mayor is an awesome video game player. And like, <laughs> <laughs> we all, I think we all bonded on a new level. It was amazing. Yeah, I thought it was just really great how we were able to um, be really loose and goofy and fun with each other, but also extremely focused and, um, you know, hardworking at the same time. You got a lot of work done, We got right? so much work done. <laughs> and there's so much more to do. Yeah, because you're uh, going to make videos out of all the interviews that you did? Yeah, it's going to be a lot to filter through. Um, but, you know, like you said, uh, it might be a glimpse of our future in some years, living out of air mattresses on a floor. Sharing a bathroom. It sounds, yeah. yes, eight people <laughs> sharing one bathroom. <laughs> it was much better than I was yeah. worrying it could be. And I think that lifestyle, like, as long as you're doing really great fun stuff simultaneously, it's really not that bad. You can, you can put aside some of the misery. <laughs> Speaking of misery, I want to um, change to the day of the inauguration. <laughs> because uh, I read your blog, so later we'll put up the blog site, because they're fabulous writings that you all did, and really entertaining. Um, but it sounded pretty physically demanding. <laughs> Um, Becky, do you, what's your memory of, of Inauguration Day? Just uh, cold, really cold, <laughs> and I think seven hours on our feet and walking, uh, walking all, not, not taking the metro, not wanting to deal with any of that, <coughs> just walking from our host house all the way to the secure area, waiting through lines, 
certain people dropping their tickets and then finding them <laughs> again. <laughs> a little bit of, uh, we have a finger <laughs> for <Sorry>. <laughs> A little <laughs> panic. Uh, and, but, um, but also just um, all of a sudden you are freezing to death. You think you're going to die. <laughs> but then something happens and you see these stick figures coming through the red velvet curtains way up there and you squint and then you look at the jumbotron and there are you know the leaders of the free world, as we say. I mean, the most powerful man in the world is is there, and you're that close. So, now, but I got you're warm also you're standing amidst mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking this is historical, or are you thinking this is too crowded? <laughs> what was going through your mind, Nietzsche? Well, actually, I was more waiting for Beyonce and <laughs> Obama to come out, so. Even though it was a little crowded, I finally found a good spot to watch the Jumbotron, and I was just excited. It, even though it was crowded, and it's just the energy that everyone brought in. We talked to all the strangers. We found some pickpocketers, actually. And we just had fun <laughs> talking to everyone. <laughs> Are you Beyonce's twin? Yes, I am. <laughs> we That's right. We share a birthday, but I just always tell everyone oh, yeah. I'm, I'm her twin. <laughs> well, you share a birthday. That's pretty good. I share one with Michelle Obama. Oh, so, yeah. Dakota, what, what were you going to say um, about your, I'm just your memories? I'm curious. Did anyone, was anyone actually able to see humans on the Capitol building? Yeah. Did it? yeah. Well, I ventured over to the right. I, guys. I'm a little too short for that. <laughs> All, the Jumbo Sean was it for me. Um, but yeah, did you see the energy there was so amazing? And the. It was a little disappointing that I couldn't actually see flesh. Like all I saw was a projected image. But um, I, all that really mattered was the energy of everyone there. Everyone was so supportive and excited, and there was so much, um, and not not just focused on like that moment there, but obviously so much hope for the next four years to come. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you, you were able to hear everything that uh, President Obama was saying. Yes. Did it feel like the speaker systems worked pretty good? Somehow <laughs> like you're on a page of history, Caroline? Uh, I think it did. I think uh, what Nitya and Dakota mentioned about the energy of being there uh, really contributed to like the historical feel of things. You know, like you're there amongst a ton of people who, um, at least the people we were surrounded by, shared um, you know the same views and they were all really enthusiastic for the next four years and it was it it was a really fun thing to be a part of yeah. it sounds like you you're walking away with this sense of hope about our future mm -hmm. well we'll we'll come back to that I, I on the creature comfort level you're freezing you're in <laughs> uh, a huge huge crowd and you're able to go back to the Democratic Municipal officer, where where did you spend the afternoon after the ceremony? Alec, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> you were really freezing. Um, I forget the name of it, but we went back to um, oh the NLC National League of Cities. Oh, the National actually, League of Cities. Uh, they had a kind of a building, and uh, <laughs> well, kind of a big building. <laughs> and, uh, it was actually great because we actually go, got to go to a reception, and then uh, we then there had you know lots of good food. And we also actually got this great view of the parade as it go went by. You know, we got to sit in chairs, didn't have to stand in the cold for two more hours, two more, three more hours. So that was a uh, very good. Any other memories of, of social networking at that uh, League of Cities? Anybody that you met there? Yeah. We Nika? met a lot of interesting people. I actually went around. Actually, Becky gave us a goal to talk to five people there, and it was just three. Oh, three? Those three. Oh, three. <laughs> Five for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I took that goal and I went around. It was a little difficult because most people were focusing on the parade. But once Obama passed by, the party kind of settled down and the people who stayed were very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, uh, I want to skip because uh, we have some time constraints. I want to skip to the what I consider the climactic part of your blogs, which is actually the day after the inauguration. But let's recreate the scene. You, you get up in the morning and you're planning to, to do what that day, Yahweh? Uh, OK, so to paint the scene, the, the guys are downstairs. Um, Wes and I are the early risers for, for the guys downstairs. Um, 
I'm going to call that Alec. We nicknamed Alec the dictator during the whole trip. <laughs> but uh, we, we had a lot of fun. And that morning, we still weren't sure about whether or not we would get into the White House. So we were just waiting for an email from uh, our contact at the White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. And she emailed and said, OK, you're a set. You're going to go in for the 11 o'clock tour. And we were all excited. We started getting ready. And uh, we headed out into this freezing, freezing weather. Um, you walked. Uh, we didn't. We didn't. We metroed over and then got out. But then it was, you know, a blast of cold air. I'm going to tag team the story here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take it from there, Caroline. Um, yeah. We waited around. There were there were extensive security regulations. We went through. I think like probably five different uh, like checkpoints, um, all in the cold. And I think, Nitya, did you say it was, it was 23 degrees but felt like 8? Was that the day? That was right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was right. it was unbelievably cold. Um, uh, but we, we eventually, I mean, it paid off waiting out. So we eventually got into the White House. So mm -hmm. you get into the White House. Uh, you're on a tour. Is that it? A official tour? Mm -hmm. What are you seeing? Do you remember any of what you saw, Nitya? Uh, we just walked in, the library was on one side, then we headed up upstairs to see that famous portrait of George Washington. And we just, we, that's the one with Valley Forge, you mean? Mm, no. no. The it was the one where, um, I don't know the name of the woman, but she took the painting out before the White House got burned. Oh, Dolly Madison. Madison. Dolly Madison. Yeah. Yeah. And we also saw the hallway where um, Obama actually makes his press releases. So then we were about to walk out to the next room, but then... Yahweh's friend actually told us to just stay where you were, so. Stay where you are. Yeah. Okay. Why? What, what do you remember? Wes, you remember something from that point? Uh, well, yeah, it was, uh, I remember the, all the, uh, all the students, they all wanted to look around because obviously we're in the White House, so it was very exciting. And uh, I just remember our contact saying, I promise, don't move. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> stay exactly where you are. And then. We all got lined up in the East Room over, uh, we, we all were lined up uh, facing the, the Green Room and the Blue Room and uh, then they opened the doors and uh, was the Green Room was right there. They sort of moved us forward and uh, now I, will, I will tag team it from here. <laughs> okay, Dakota, who is, who is waiting to meet you? <sighs> okay, well, yeah, so we're all standing there, and then the staff people open the doors to the blue room and are sort of, like, guiding people in one at a time, and there is no warning whatsoever. We've been told by um, Yahweh's friend, the contact in the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, that uh, a special guest is there. And then she lets on, like, an hour later, okay, Michelle Obama, the first lady, is going to be here. <laughs> and even at that point, we're all freaking out. And, you know, what am I going to say? Like, practicing your lines and, like, <laughs> holding hands. <laughs> okay, got this. Um, and then I, you know, really excited, just jumped through the doors, and both of them were there, the president and the first lady. And... Wasn't there a third member the dog, of the first Bo. family? Yes, and the first dog, Bo. <laughs> and it was just an epic jaw drop moment. <laughs> okay, so Becky, you're a little older than some of the students, only a little. Yeah, that's right. But <laughs> I'm just wondering, you know, you've seen it all. Oh, yes. oh, so yeah. were you were you amazed? Did your jaw drop? Yes. Definitely. Do I you was, remember the moment, mm -hmm. like walking up to uh, the president well, and the first lady? I, I had to. I poked my head around the corner, uh, around someone's shoulder, just to see the first lady and you know how it was, how, what the setup was. And then I saw this really tall man beside her, and that was the president. And I, I really, you know, time stood still for me. I hate to say it. It was. It was like your first kiss or something like that. <laughs> it was just this amazing moment where, yeah. Okay, and then I, I, I pull myself together, but and and just then you went on automatic pilot. I mean, what are you going to do? Pass out? No, you just go forward. So, yeah. Yahweh, it was, was it the first time you were in the presence of the president yeah, and the first lady? My first thought that went through. Um, I'd worked on the 08 campaign, and you know there were life-size cutouts of the president or the you know the president to be. And my first thought was like, oh my gosh, the cardboard cutout walks and talks and moves. <laughs> <laughs> he was just right there. And it, it, 
I mean, it was just a surreal moment. You know, one, one filled with their graciousness. And, you know, it's the day after uh, inauguration. And they're there to just welcome and surprise the guests. So uh, truly an unforgettable moment. And uh, yeah, I, I know we had talked about whether or not we washed our hands afterwards. And uh, <laughs> the highlight for me was also that the White House pastry chefs prepared cookies for us after we had met. I finished mine yesterday. <laughs> oh, great. And Alec, do you remember what you said or what he said to you? Mm. <laughs> Wait, to the pastry chef or the president? Because let's it's start two completely with the different conversations. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's, let's stick with the president. Yeah, that's a good uh, idea. I actually didn't remember what I said to the president because I was so in shock. Like, I just walked in and I was like, <laughs> like I wouldn't Back. even know what was going through my brain. So I had no idea what I said. Apparently, I said, like, good to see you, Mr. President. Thank you so much. Somewhere, somewhere around that lines. OK, well, we have the video of, uh, of all of you meeting the President and the First Lady. It's just a little over a minute long. So if you have the video queued up, go ahead and roll it. Good to see you. Thanks so much. We're not going to all do pictures, though. That's the only thing. So nice to see you. <laughs> Good. Have fun while you're here. Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay. If they, they don't meet us, they draw. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. What's your name? Thank you so much. I should go stand for the I'm You're a Malia. I know. Did your parents grow up in Hawaii? Or? Did she? Oh. Was she my classmate or something? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Good to see you. What's your name? Okay. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you so much, Kate. Hey, how are you? What's your name? I'm Dakota. Hey, Dakota. Good to see you. I think Boa thinks your coat might be alive. That's not alive, Boa. Sit, sit. There you go. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much. Hope you've had a good time this week. Thank you. It's good to see you. All right, enjoy. We're back in the Media Center's TV studio, uh, far away from the White House, and but I'm with the six people you just saw meeting the President and the First Lady and the First Dog, Bo. And I want to just finish, we're going to wrap up this incredible adventure story of going to Washington, D.C. for the inauguration. Uh, and I, I heard from Becky, but I didn't hear the content that the final night after you'd met the President and the First Lady and you'd done all this work interviewing people at the Democratic Municipal Officers and um, that your, your last night, I don't know where you ate, I don't know how many of those gummy bears or fruit things you had, but I, do, I did hear that Yahweh said something to, to you guys uh, on a more personal level. I wonder if any of you remember at this point, eight days later, what he said to you. Do any of you remember? Yeah, I that? remember. Okay, <laughs> Alan. Okay, so in context, basically, Yahweh, when he was uh, young like us, I, I forget who, but someone took him out to Washington, D.C. Uh, for a trip, you know, an amazing trip. And he told us that it's really important, you know, get the youth involved and that one day he wants us to one day, you know, bring youth. When we're old, you know, doing our thing, <laughs> We, uh, you know, select a group of people and take them on an amazing trip, you know, get them involved in the community, however way we can. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was a very good plan. So I'll definitely be taking you up on that. Anybody else yeah. think they'll take them up? Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, actually, myself, I was thinking that politics and public service is such a great career choice. I, just going through all the, the interviews and the parties definitely opened my eye to that career choice. Do you feel like uh, you actually changed your focus as a result of that trip? Is there anything different in what you're thinking about your future now? It's just um, before it was more closed, it's like this is what I'm going to do, but now it's more of I can do whatever I really enjoy. What about you, For Dakota? For me, it's kind of the opposite. I, for a while, was in this I don't know what I like to do and just taking classes and everything because I want to keep my options open and I knew I was always interested in like politics and 
leadership and public service. Um, but this trip really like took it to the heart and clarified it for me and I think made me more um, interested in focusing my education in that direction. What about you, Caroline? Um, I had always been really intimidated by politics. I hadn't been very involved in it and um, I had thought politics as a concept kind of hypothetically could be something I could be interested in when I grew up, but it wasn't until I was there talking to, you know, the elected officials and talking to the people who are involved in government um, and politics that I, like, really began to think about it, and it's, it's definitely an option. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> did it leave a, an impression on you, Alec? Uh, yes, it did. Um, throughout my whole life, I always wanted a career, you know, that helps others, and before this trip, I didn't really see a politician as that. You know, I always thought, like, oh, politicians, those, like, <laughs> dirty people they like scheme and all this but uh, you know after this trip I really realized that it's a great way to you know help your community even though you're not realized and recognized you know on the local level I found out actually through this trip you know this inspiring trip that is actually possible to help others you know keep the city going and let's let's finish with Wes uh, because you're just a little further along on your career path you're still in college you're doing all this broadcast journalism work is it going to change because of this trip? Uh, that's a great question. Well, I think we lost your audio, so we'll try to get you back. But you in know, the I really think oh. it will. Um, I definitely. Do you guys have me? Uh, cutting in and out, but say it. Say it one more time. Okay. Well, uh, I definitely think that I have been impacted politically by this experience. Uh, I have always been told by folks that I would make a good politician and I really have never considered it as an option for me or I've not really been into um, you know politics uh, as a part of my broadcast journalism training but uh, I am definitely going to, to add that sort of to my repertoire and we'll, you know maybe we'll take a political science class or uh, you know add to more focus more of my attention on politics and uh, I'm just really glad about this whole experience that uh, everybody had come together the way they did. I mean, we had the DMO, we had the National Association of Broadcasters, the National League of Cities, the White House, I mean, everybody, and the Media Center, everybody came together, and, and that was a really neat experience. <laughs> Thank you. So just as we, as we get to the very end of the story, I want to go actually to the prequel and just hear how Becky and Yahweh and how this team became a reality, how this connection between the city and the media center and how this trip might bode for the future of that relationship. Do you want to tell us? Uh, well, uh, as Wes said, we did a kind of a pilot program with uh, Sid Espinoza. Actually, Shobana Swami, who is one of our studio volunteers, did the actual first uh, mayor's video. Uh, she taped uh, uh, Sid at the uh, uh, Martin Luther King Day of Service. Uh, last year in 2000, I guess that would have been 2011. So, and then kind of Wes and Sid just hit it off and Wes made a bunch of short videos about Sid's uh, experiences. And then when um, Sid retired and Yahweh uh, became our mayor, Yahweh came to the media center and had a meeting with Annie and me and we kind of hatched this idea. And then Yahweh and I and then our youth uh, education coordinator at the time, Brad Sanzabacher, went to uh, the high schools and pitched uh, the idea. So uh, you take it from there, Yahweh. Yeah, and I mean, we were fortunate to have people sign up. You know, it's something too where it's, it's an unknown you know, to ask people to sign up for something called infrastructure and to say, please make a video about it. This has an impact on our community. Um, and we were fortunate that the YVC members stepped up. Um, and I know, uh, you know that's something where as the videos kind of get out there in the community, um, it's just cool to know that, you know, as a medium, video really has this longevity to it. Um, and that's something where, uh, you know, that longevity of what the youth have focused on, that's a pretty cool aspect of work. You know, sometimes it comes and goes, but um, this is something that actually, uh, you know, an example was uh, for El Camino Park and the water reservoir that's being put in. Not many people are ever gonna see it once it's all done. But because of this video, you got to see the guts of it, you know, and it's the youth that really captured it before it got capped and it disappeared. 
Is it an idea that some of your colleagues, other mayors in other cities are excited about after seeing what you, you did here? I, I think that was definitely part of the DMO invitation. They wanted to introduce this model to the other electeds. And I think you know, they, they have not yet all seen the videos that were developed by the YVC. And in that sense, there's this, a great opportunity to educate them about the great work that the YVC and the Media Center did together. Um, but it, you know, I, I know the basis for the invitation was because of their interest. And just two uh, credits I want to give before we, we go to our final video and say goodbye. Uh, I know that Southwest Airlines and Congresswoman Eshoo mm -hmm. uh, both played a role in this. Can you tell us how, how they fit in? Uh, Becky worked really great with oh, Southwest. And, and um, Kim DeLevitt uh, mm -hmm. was a community affairs representative from Southwest down in, based in San Jose. And, she stepped up, provided these incredible uh, vouchers that let us have back-end flexibility when we all end up staying you know, after meeting with the uh, President and First Lady. And then Congresswoman Eshoo, uh, she has long supported youth. And when she heard the story of the YVC, she just said, I want to make tickets available. And we were one of two groups that ultimately got more than one ticket because of, I know, her belief in the YVC. Um, and we uh, had about a almost half hour 20 to 30 minute conversation with her on a weekend mm -hmm. because she just wanted to, to check in with us and um, she shared that she was inspired by the youth and that was pretty cool to hear. Well, I'm definitely inspired. If we could get the URL of their blog site up on the screen, it would be great if people at home want to hear in their written words what they went through. Uh, it was uh, a wonderfully written and an inspiring account of those five days, most much of which you heard tonight. And we're going to go out. Uh, I want to I give one shout out to Roundtable Pizza on, on um, Colorado and Palo Alto, because we're all about to dive into a few pizzas uh, right <laughs> after this last video that was put together by none other than Wes Rappaport, our budding reporter down in uh, Chapman College. And so we, we bid you good evening from the six Palo Alto to inauguration team, the Youth Video Corps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's not a lie, folks. Sit, sit. There you go. <laughs>